What happens in the Arctic doesn't stay in the Arctic. That's Jack Kohler. He's an American glaciologist who's worked in Norway for 30 years. When did you first arrive, Elizabeth? Here. Yeah. We came here in 96, first time. And that's his wife, Elizabeth. She's Swedish, and she's also a glaciologist. Our son was, he was a year old. So you actually had, you had your son here with you? Yeah. That first year? Yeah, because I was still breastfeeding. Yeah, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So every time I passed that polar bear there in the entrance, I think about William. Because he was terrified. He would cringe like this way when he passed. Good memory. My, my wife and I both work at the Polar Institute, both as glaciologists. So we, yeah, we've done field work together a bunch of times. So I listened to him, but of course I can come with suggestion if it's completely, you know. Uh, suggestion. This is a stupid idea. Yeah. It might look comfortable up here, but these folks, they put in some hard work. I never set foot on a glacier before I uh, started my degree in geology, and it was by accident that I was uh, that I found myself on a glacier, hired for a summer to go and be a field assistant. And you got hooked. And I got hooked. Yeah. On the boat now with Jack and crew, heading out to the face of the glacier to see how it's changed. Jack works for the Norwegian Polar Institute, a government agency that studies and monitors the Arctic. In the water, there's lots of ice that's broken off from the glacier. Great for lounging, but it does make it hard to get close to the front. I can say that this is about where the front of the glacier was in 1996. First time I came here, Jack's been studying this glacier for 27 years, and he knows it really well. And uh, now the glacier front is, as you can see, quite far away, almost four kilometers distant, two and a half miles, the American audience. Well, we're still two and a half miles. Yeah. It doesn't feel that far away. No, it's, but it's very hard to tell uh, the scale of things out here. It's difficult to judge scale because the glacier is so massive. At the front, it's as tall as a 15-story building and almost two miles wide. Jack marks the front of the glacier every year. Here's where it is now, and we are about here. But in 1985, the glacier front would have actually been behind us. In the past two years, the glacier has gone from here in 2021 to here in 2022 and now to here in 2023, what's lost is like eight football fields. And researchers also went back to the site of old photographs to see what's changed. It's dramatic to see the changes from year to year. And when Jack and his colleagues modeled future conditions, they concluded by 2100, the glaciers will be losing their ice twice as fast as they are now. So what I really try to communicate to people is that a drop of water that melts in Svalbard doesn't disappear off the face of the planet. It goes to the ocean and the ocean is, covers the whole planet. And so when we melt ice in the Arctic, it goes to sea level rise. 42% of sea level rise comes from warming ocean water, which expands as it warms. 21% comes from melting glaciers around the world. 23% from melting ice sheets in Greenland and Antarctica. What does that mean in the US? Well, sea level rise projections over the next 30 years anticipate 10 to 14 inches of rise on the East Coast, 14 to 18 on the Gulf Coast, and four to eight inches on the west coast. That sea level rise is going to impact everywhere. If you live in Florida, you're seeing the effect of sea level rise already. There's uh, plenty of pictures of, of uh, very high tides, which are not caused by any storms or anything. It's yeah. uh, just a, a daily occurrence. And this is because sea level is inexorably rising and glaciers are contributing very significantly to that. We're documenting the effect of the climate change locally here, of course, but I have colleagues all over the globe who are doing similar uh, 
things and they're all seeing the same thing. It's warmer, there's more melt, uh, there's no compensating increase in, in precipitation. The winter snow season is, is shrinking uh, because of the increase in temperature.